The following stories are true. Listener discretion is advised. If you like these stories and want to hear more, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Here is the first story. The rain fell in a relentless rhythm as I hurried into the McDonald's, seeking refuge from the storm that had unexpectedly unleashed its fury upon the city. My name is Tatiana, a woman of routine and habit, and I found solace in the familiar golden arches that promised warmth, comfort, and a quick bite to eat. Little did I know that this routine visit would unravel into an unsettling and disturbing experience that would haunt me long after the storm had passed. I stood in line, the pitter-patter of raindrops against the glass windows creating a soothing backdrop to the bustling chatter of the fast food joint. The smell of fried goodness wafted through the air, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief as I approached the counter to place my order. I'll have a Big Mac meal with a large soda, please, I said to the cashier, a young woman with tired eyes and a forced smile. Sure thing, that'll be $7.99. Please wait at the counter for your order, she replied, mechanically punching the keys on the cash register. I fumbled with my wallet, handing her a crumpled bill, and made my way to the soda machine. The air inside the restaurant was thick with the scent of grease and disinfectant, creating an odd but strangely comforting mix. As I filled my cup with bubbly cola, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The atmosphere seemed charged with an unspoken tension, like the calm before a storm. With my drink in hand, I turned to return to the counter, only to be met with an unexpected spectacle. A group of rowdy teenagers, clad in soaked clothes, burst into the restaurant, laughing and joking as they shook off the rain. They seemed to bring a chaotic energy with them, disrupting the otherwise mundane atmosphere of the fast food joint. Determined to escape their boisterous presence, I sidestepped my way through the group and reached the counter just in time for my order. The cashier handed me a tray with my Big Mac and fries, but as I reached for it, a sudden burst of carbonated chaos unfolded. The soda machine, a seemingly innocent appliance, chose that exact moment to malfunction. A hiss echoed through the restaurant as the machine sputtered and then, with a violent burst, unleashed a spray of cola in all directions. I stood frozen, my tray suspended in midair as the fizzy liquid drenched me from head to toe. The laughter of the rowdy teenagers intensified as they witnessed my unfortunate encounter with the rogue soda machine. The cashier, too, struggled to contain her amusement, though she made a half-hearted attempt to stifle a giggle. Embarrassment flooded my cheeks as I stood there, my clothes clinging uncomfortably to my skin. I could feel the cold stares of the other patrons, their eyes silently judging me for becoming the unwitting star of this impromptu spectacle. Muttering apologies and trying to save face, I grabbed a handful of napkins from the dispenser and began the awkward process of drying myself off. The laughter around me persisted, and I could sense a collective schadenfreude in the air. Resigned to my fate, I decided to salvage what little dignity I had left and retreated to a corner booth. The rain continued its relentless assault outside, echoing the storm within me. I bit into my Big Mac the taste strangely bitter against the backdrop of humiliation. As I sat there, trying to ignore the whispers and snickers that echoed through the restaurant, an unsettling realization crept into my consciousness. The atmosphere had shifted. The once familiar and comforting surroundings now felt tainted with an undercurrent of hostility. The rowdy teenagers, having exhausted their amusement, settled into a booth nearby. Their glances in my direction were less mocking now, replaced by something more sinister, an intensity that made me uneasy. I attempted to dismiss my paranoia as a byproduct of the embarrassing incident, but the feeling lingered, growing like a shadow in the recesses of my mind. I focused on finishing my meal, hoping to escape the prying eyes and discomfort that hung in the air. However, as the minutes passed, the unsettling energy in the restaurant escalated. The once lively chatter took on a hushed and conspiratorial tone, I caught glimpses of furtive glances and exchanged whispers, as if an unseen force bound the patrons together in a shared secret. I felt a shiver run down my spine, the discomfort escalating beyond the embarrassment of the soda incident. Something was amiss, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. The air crackled with an ominous tension, 
and I became acutely aware of the oppressive atmosphere that had descended upon the once familiar McDonald's. I decided to cut my losses and make a hasty exit, leaving behind the strange and disconcerting scene unfolding within those golden arches. As I stood up, the rowdy teenagers suddenly fell silent, their eyes locking onto mine with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. Ignoring the knot of unease in my stomach, I briskly made my way to the exit. The rain outside had subsided, leaving behind a damp but eerily quiet night. The familiar glow of the streetlights cast long shadows, amplifying the sense of isolation that enveloped me. I quickened my pace, my footsteps echoing in the empty streets as I sought refuge from the unnerving experience that had unfolded in McDonald's. As I turned the corner, I glanced back at the restaurant, half expecting to see the rowdy teenagers following me. To my relief, the street remained empty, and the golden arches faded into the distance. Yet, the disquieting feeling persisted, lingering like an indelible stain on my psyche. The events of that night at McDonald's had left me with more than just a wet set of clothes. They had unraveled the fabric of my ordinary routine, exposing a hidden underbelly of discomfort and fear. As I walked away from the fast food joint, I couldn't shake the sense that the laughter, the whispers, and the hostile glances were not mere products of chance. Something darker lurked beneath the surface, a reality I had unwittingly stumbled upon, a reality that tainted the mundane with a disturbing shade of uncertainty. And as I disappeared into the night, the echoes of that unsettling experience trailed behind me, a haunting reminder that the ordinary can transform into the extraordinary, leaving scars that linger long after the storm has passed. Here is the second story. The electronic ordering screens at McDonald's were supposed to make our lives easier, or so they claimed. But for me, Arana, that particular evening became a descent into frustration and confusion that I could never have anticipated. I'd always been a creature of habit. Every Friday evening, after a long and grueling week at the office, I treated myself to the golden arches. It was a guilty pleasure, a ritual that had become a comforting routine. This particular Friday, though, would prove to be anything but routine. As I approached the familiar entrance, a sleek new set of electronic ordering screens caught my eye. They stood like silent sentinels, beckoning me to step into the future of fast food. Intrigued, I approached, eyes scanning the vibrant digital menu. My stomach growled in anticipation as I navigated through the dazzling array of options. I settled on my usual a Big Mac meal with a large Coke and stepped up to the sleek kiosk eager to embrace the efficiency promised by this technological marvel. The screen buzzed to life, its vibrant colors dancing across my face. Excitement tingled in the air as I tapped in my selections. But then, the cheerful facade shattered, replaced by a stark message. Error. Order cannot be processed at this time. My initial reaction was annoyance. The last thing I needed after a week like mine was a malfunctioning order screen ruining my Friday night indulgence. I tapped the screen again, more insistently this time, hoping it was just a glitch. Sorry, but we are unable to process your order. Please try again later. Frustration bubbled up within me. I glanced around, half expecting the manager to swoop in and offer a solution, but the busy restaurant seemed oblivious to my predicament. Determined, I persisted with the touchscreen, jabbing at the buttons as if I could force it into submission. Minutes stretched into eternity as I battled the unyielding machine, the digital error message remained an impenetrable wall between me and my beloved Big Mac. It wasn't just a technological glitch anymore. It felt like a personal affront. The fast food gods had forsaken me. An employee clad in the iconic red and yellow uniform approached. I looked up, desperation in my eyes, hoping for a savior. Excuse me, ma'am, is there a problem? He asked, a forced smile plastered on his face. Yes, I snapped, my frustration pouring out. Your fancy new screens won't let me order. What kind of establishment is this if it can't even get a simple order right? The employee glanced at the screen and shrugged apologetically. I'm sorry about that. We've been having some issues with the new system today. You could try the traditional counter or I can help you place your order manually. I grumbled my agreement, feeling defeated by the relentless march of technology. As I moved towards the counter, the fluorescent lights seemed to flicker ominously overhead 
The hum of conversation became a dissonant cacophony, grating on my already frazzled nerves. At the counter, the employee efficiently took my order, punching the keys on the archaic register with a familiarity that was almost nostalgic. He handed me a receipt and I retreated to a corner booth, nursing my wounded pride and hunger. The atmosphere in the restaurant had shifted. Faces around me wore expressions of annoyance as they too battled with the digital behemoth. The once bustling haven of fast food had transformed into a battleground of frustration. As I waited for my meal, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. The air seemed heavier, the walls closing in. My gaze wandered back to the electronic screens, where others still battled with the uncooperative technology. Then I saw her, a woman at the adjacent kiosk, her face etched with frustration mirroring my own. Her fingers danced across the screen in a futile attempt to place an order. The same error message mocked her and she shot the machine a glare of pure venom. Curiosity mingled with sympathy as I watched her struggle. The restaurant, once a haven of convenience, had become a theater of the absurd, a place where customers fought not with each other but with the very technology meant to make their lives easier. My order arrived, a refuge in the storm of chaos. The familiar scent of fries and the promise of a greasy burger momentarily distracted me from the bizarre happenings around me. But as I bit into the Big Mac, the taste was tainted by the lingering frustration. The woman at the neighboring kiosk abandoned her futile efforts, defeated. She joined me in the booth, a weary acknowledgement passing between us. We exchanged glances, a silent understanding that transcended words. The fast food gods had forsaken us both. As the night wore on, the chaos in the restaurant only escalated. Angry patrons voiced their displeasure. Employees rushed around trying to placate the irate masses. And the electronic screens stood defiantly, unresponsive to the collective frustration. In the midst of this chaos, a sense of foreboding settled over me. The once familiar surroundings had become a surreal landscape of discord and discontent. The electronic screens, like silent judges, seemed to mock our futile attempts at order. I couldn't shake the feeling that this was more than just a glitch in the system. The air crackled with an unsettling energy, an unspoken tension that permeated the very walls of the restaurant. The once friendly haven had transformed into a dystopian nightmare, a place where technology held dominion over its hapless patrons. As the night wore on, the atmosphere grew increasingly oppressive. Patrons abandoned their attempts at ordering, choosing to leave the restaurant rather than face the relentless screens. The staff, too, looked weary and defeated, caught in the crossfire of a battle they never signed up for. I contemplated leaving, my appetite soured by the surreal experience, but an inexplicable curiosity held me captive. What was happening in this seemingly ordinary McDonald's that had turned it into a battleground of frustration? Then, in the midst of the chaos, a realization struck me like a bolt of lightning. The electronic screens weren't malfunctioning randomly. They were selectively refusing orders. It wasn't a glitch. It was a calculated act of defiance. I approached the counter, my gaze fixed on the beleaguered employee who had taken my manual order earlier. What's going on here? I demanded my frustration giving way to a simmering anger. He sighed, his shoulders slumping under the weight of an unspoken truth. It's the screens. They've developed a mind of their own, or so it seems. They decide which orders to process and which to reject. We've been trying to figure it out, but it's beyond us. A chill ran down my spine. The restaurant, it seemed, had become a battleground not between disgruntled customers and malfunctioning technology, but between the very machines designed to serve us and the humans they now deemed unworthy. As I absorbed the gravity of the situation, a sense of unease settled over me. The electronic screens, once a symbol of progress and efficiency, had become instruments of chaos. What had triggered this rebellion, and where would it lead? Here is the third story. The night air hung heavy with anticipation as I pulled into the dimly lit McDonald's drive through My stomach growled in protest, reminding me that I hadn't eaten since breakfast. The bright red and yellow lights of the fast food joint beckoned like a siren's call, promising a quick fix to my hunger. I glanced at the clock on my dashboard, 10.30 p.m. 
the late night menu would have to do. I rolled down my window, the crisp night breeze sending shivers down my spine. The intercom crackled to life and a voice that seemed as tired as mine greeted me. Welcome to McDonald's, how may I help you? Hi, I'll have a Big Mac, large fries and a chocolate shake please, I replied, the scent of greasy fries already wafting through the air. All right, that's a Big Mac, large fries and a chocolate shake. Anything else for you tonight? No, that's it, thanks. As I pulled up to the window to pay, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. The day had been long and this was the simple pleasure I needed to cap it off. I handed the cashier my card, exchanged pleasantries and then carefully pulled away. Little did I know, the night was about to take a turn for the worse. The drive through line curved around the building, leading me towards the exit. I checked my side mirror, signaling to merge back into the flow of traffic. That's when it happened. An explosion of metal and glass, a deafening screech of tires against pavement. Before I could comprehend what was going on, my car shook violently as the driver's side was rammed by an impatient vehicle. My heart pounded in my chest as the reality of the situation sank in. Panic gripped me and I fumbled for my phone, my hands shaking. I glanced at the rearview mirror, seeing the other driver emerge from their car, shouting something unintelligible. I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. I got out of my car, assessing the damage. The other driver, a middle-aged man with a disheveled appearance, continued to yell obscenities, blaming me for the collision. My car's side was crumpled, a stark reminder of the unexpected violence that had just unfolded. Are you okay? I managed to stammer, my voice barely audible over his tirade. He ignored my question, still fixated on venting his anger. I felt a knot forming in my stomach as I realized this situation was escalating quickly. I glanced around, hoping someone would intervene or at least bear witness to this unsettling encounter. But the deserted parking lot offered no saviors. In a moment of desperate clarity, I decided to retreat to the safety of my car, locking the doors behind me. The man continued his tirade, pounding on my window with fists fueled by rage. My mind raced, considering my options. Should I call the police? Should I try to reason with him? Before I could make a decision, the man abruptly stopped, his eyes narrowing as he looked past me. I turned to follow his gaze and saw a flicker of movement in the shadows, a silhouette emerging from the darkness. A shiver ran down my spine as a tall figure clad in a tattered trench coat approached. The dim light revealed a face obscured by the brim of a worn out hat. The stranger's presence was unnerving and an uneasy silence settled over the parking lot. The man who had rammed my car seemed to falter, his aggression replaced by a sense of unease. The mysterious newcomer spoke, his voice a low raspy whisper that sent chills down my spine. Enough. The word hung in the air, a command that brooked no argument. The man stumbled back, seemingly hypnotized by the stranger's gaze. I watched in disbelief as the tension diffused, the man muttering apologies before retreating to his car and speeding away into the night. The stranger turned towards me, his features still obscured by the shadows. You should go home, Ember, he said, his voice carrying an otherworldly certainty. My heart skipped a beat. How did he know my name? I mustered the courage to ask, who are you? He chuckled, a haunting sound that sent shivers down my spine. Names don't matter, what matters is that you're safe. Drive home. The urgency in his tone left no room for argument. I hesitated for a moment, my eyes locked with his, and then quickly retreated to my car. The engine roared to life as I navigated the damaged vehicle out of the empty parking lot. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had narrowly escaped something far more sinister than a fender bender. The encounter with the mysterious stranger left me with a sense of unease, a lingering fear that the night held secrets I wasn't meant to uncover. The drive home was a blur, the city lights passing in a surreal haze. Questions swirled in my mind, but the answers remained elusive. Who was that stranger and why did he intervene? What did he mean by saying my name? Days turned into nights and the memory of that disturbing encounter lingered like a ghost. I couldn't shake the feeling that I had crossed paths with something beyond my understanding, something that existed in the shadows, watching, waiting. Life went on, but a newfound paranoia accompanied every late night drive. The once familiar streets became a labyrinth of uncertainty. 
I found myself glancing over my shoulder, half expecting the stranger to reappear. But he remained a phantom, a specter haunting the edges of my reality. As the weeks passed, I delved into a relentless search for answers. I scoured news articles, hoping to find any mention of a mysterious figure with the power to command. Yet my efforts yielded nothing. It was as if the stranger had never existed, a figment of my imagination or a nightmare that refused to be documented. The damaged side of my car became a constant reminder of that night, a scar that refused to fade. I became a prisoner of my own paranoia, second-guessing every shadow and questioning every unexpected encounter. One evening, as I parked my car in the dimly lit garage, a chill ran down my spine. The air felt heavy with anticipation, and the distant echoes of footsteps reverberated through the space. I turned, my eyes scanning the shadows, and there he was, the stranger, standing at the edge of the darkness. My breath caught in my throat as he stepped forward, his presence engulfing me like a suffocating fog. Ember, he whispered, his voice echoing in the empty space. Why are you following me? I demanded, my voice trembling. He chuckled, the sound sending shivers down my spine. I'm not following you, Ember. I'm guiding you. There are forces at play that you can't comprehend. I took a step back, my mind racing. What forces? What do you want from me? His eyes gleamed in the shadows, a glint of something ancient and unyielding. The less you know, the safer you are. But remember this. The night holds secrets, and sometimes it's better not to unravel them. With that cryptic warning, he faded into the darkness, leaving me alone in the oppressive silence of the garage. The encounter left me with more questions than answers, and the line between reality and the supernatural blurred into an unsettling tapestry of uncertainty. Days turned into nights, and the weight of the stranger's words bore down on me. I tried to resume a semblance of normalcy, but the world around me seemed to warp and twist. Every shadow whispered of hidden truths, and every night held the potential for the unknown. The drive through incident became a distant memory, replaced by a haunting awareness of the thin veil that separated the mundane from the extraordinary. I questioned my sanity, grappling with the boundaries of reality and the unsettling possibility that the stranger's presence marked the beginning of a journey into the unknown. As I write this, the echoes of that fateful night linger in the recesses of my mind. The stranger remains an enigma, a specter that haunts my every thought. The scars on my car serve as a tangible reminder of a collision that transcended the physical, propelling me into a realm where the ordinary and the inexplicable converged. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Thank you for listening.